The Center for the Study of Partnership, Partisanship and Ideology released a new report that rebukes the idea that economic concerns actually led to the Trump era, but rather that culture motivates voters. So that analysis found that attitudes on immigration in particular led a lot of white Americans to favor Trump and that their income didn't actually correlate much with how they ultimately voted. President of the Center for the Study of Partisanship and Ideology and Research Fellow at Defense Priorities, Richard Hanania, joins us now to discuss what he calls the national populist illusion. It's so great to have you, Richard. Good to see you, Richard. Yeah. Thank you. Great to be here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I won't speak for Sagar, but I'll speak for myself. Like, I sort of hate the results of this study, <laughs> which is why we wanted to have you on, not to yeah. attack you, but be the reason I hate it is because I fear that there's too much to it. Um, so, Richard, just lay out what your goal was with this study and ultimately what you uncovered here. Yeah, so, I mean, what we try to do in CSPI is we try to bring some social science, some data into political conversations. And so one of the most popular ideas on the uh, political right in particular is that the Republicans had become a working class party. So you see this, uh, you know, Marco Rubio says this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Ted Cruz says this, people like Josh Hawley say this. And, you know, so we just wanted to explore that a little bit. You know, it's not a new idea in um, political science or people who look at the data to say that uh, cultural factors matter more than economic factors. I mean, it's been known for decades and decades. If you know somebody's uh, economic situation, it's pretty hard to predict how they vote. But mm -hmm. if you know, for example, how they feel about immigration, how they respond to stuff like PC, what they say about gender roles, it's uh, you're, you're much better. You're much closer on track. So just going to 2020 um, and 2016 in particular, you know, for example, um, in the last election, according to the exit polls. Uh, Trump won those making over $100,000 a year. Biden won those making under 50000 Now, part of that is, is race, blacks, and Hispanics. But even if you just focus on whites, um, you see it's it's pretty close. You take the the wealth whites, you know, that are making over a hundred thousand and under thirty or forty thousand. They're pretty, you know, they're pretty much the same. Maybe a, a few point uh, points here or there, but it's not a very strong predictor. Even if you just you know put aside and just focus on white Americans, uh, you do find. Um, especially in the Trump era, a shift between college and non-college. So, you know, back in Romney's G uh, Romney's day, Romney's GOP, uh, co college degree didn't really predict if you were white, what, how likely you were to vote uh, Romney versus Obama. Sure. Uh, in 2020 and 2016, that's, that's shifted a little bit. So uh, college-educated people are – uh, college educated whites in particular are more likely to support Democrats now. But the idea that it's based on economic concerns is mm. pretty, uh, you know, the evidence for that is not good because still uh, income is not a great predictor. And so, yeah. as you know, I'm sure as your viewers know, not everybody who goes to college is wealthier than every, people who don't go to college. And someone who didn't go to college and makes a lot of money is probably a Trump supporter, while somebody who went to college and maybe is a starving grad student is, is sort of the prototypical Biden yeah. or Democrat. It's so, it's so interesting, Richard. I've, I've been saying it here. That largely, it seems that the four-year college degree seems to be one of the most predictive things about it. And look, I mean, I was depressed, but I think you're probably right. I've read through a lot of your, uh, I've read through a lot of that study and, and some some of the findings. Here's the re my real question. How do you explain the Obama-Trump phenomenon? The Obama voter to the Trump voter, the what, several million or so who actually switched their votes there? Because that was always, I think, one of the better, at least anecdotal cases for being like, hey, this is economic. I mean, they voted for a guy named Barack Hussein Obama. So what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think that what happened was that between 2016 and, say, 2008, uh, these sort of racial cultural issues became a much more much more salient. So, I mean, it's not as simple as, you know, Barack Obama's race and his name and his background. He also did a lot of things to sort of downplay these spheres, like, for example, uh, being a little bit tougher on illegal immigration than, say, Hillary or uh, Biden, uh, Hillary and Bi or Biden would be. And then Republicans weren't really playing up the immigration issue. So it's right. completely consistent with the idea that when Trump came along, and he sort of became this unapologetic opponent of PC, uh, PC that a lot of people um, in the Midwest, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, less college educated whites and some college educated whites, too, and some minorities, too, bought into that. So I, I don't think it's just positive because people voted for Obama. It's not a cultural thing. It's not just about Obama's, uh, 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 you know, background and who he is. It's also the positions people take. Yeah, yeah I think point. that I think that's interesting. You know, some of the other correlations that we looked at is like, there was a correlation between opioid deaths and support for Trump. There's a correlation between job loss and especially job loss to automation and support for Trump. How do you explain some of those uh, factors that we saw play out? 
Yeah, correlations, correlational studies are, you know, one source of evidence. They can occasionally be uh, misleading. So, you know, when you drill down a little bit and you look at actual individuals instead of, you know, what's going on the county level, which could be a lot of different factors, um, you, you don't find that these uh, things are really huge. I'll give you one example. There was a study that just looked at what industry you were in and saw how, um, how uh, uh, subject to foreign competition uh, that particular industry was, and even at that, even at that level, those in for those in, in it wasn't a good predictor. If you were in an industry that had a lot of foreign competition, even your attitude towards trade wasn't really predictive. Only the, the the cultural attitudes were actually more uh, more predictive. Uh, so the the county level data, you can find a lot of things. You know, there's a funny story in political science where uh, uh, if you looked at sort of George Wallace's vote, um, you'd find it was higher in black in black areas, and people mm-hmm. you could say, well, George Wallace won the black vote. No, not really. He won, you know, whites in those areas yes. that um, have a lot had a high number of African Americans, so that you know there could be something to uh, county level and precinct level data, but you know I think we always prefer uh, individual voter data over it when we can find it. Yeah, absolutely, Richard. And you know what you're telling me basically is that the culture war is king, uh, that it's going to rule our politics. Here's my real question, though: How, What role, if anything, did economics play? Because I do find it hard to believe that Trump wins the 2016 presidential election and nomination without, at the very least, the the primary, by attacking Jeb Bush for some of the positions that he held, as well as Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. So the question is, is is the national populist economic message may not be vital to him winning the record number of votes that he won, but was it at least vital in securing him the nomination? So what I'm really asking you is, is is there a Republican politician that's going to explicitly run again on free trade and those economic promises, or do you think it's just totally and completely irrelevant? Um, you know, it's hard to say anything is, you know, completely irrelevant, mm-hmm. even in the general election, if the vote is decided by a few 10,000 votes in a few states, potentially anything can be important. And we can't really disprove that, you know, this didn't yeah. matter at all. Um, as far as Trump in the primaries, I would guess, you know, I was I was following the media at the time and I, the conservative media in particular, I would guess that the immigration issue probably trumped that a lot than the, mm-hmm. you know, trade or um, what he said about Social Security or Medicare. Uh, but, um, you know, and some people will say, well, trade is, a, I mean, immigration is a bit of an economic issue. Uh, y- you know, yeah, but, you know, it's it has an outsized influence compared to, for example, how people, fit, you know, unionization or whatever. I mean, sure. I think the real concern with immigration is culture because you, you people who care about immigration tend not to care pair tend to not sort of be consistent and care about other things that have, are related to uh, wages. So if I was going to say, if I was going to boil it down to one factor in 2016, I think it's partly immigration. Partly it's not just an issue itself. It's partly the perception that he fights, that he sort of needles the libs, that he was sticking it to liberals uh, mm-hmm. while Jeb Bush like compromising them. I mean, the second place, in, uh, you know, people really didn't want Jeb Bush in 2016. And uh, the closest person to Trump was uh, Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz is not known for being, uh, at least at the time, he was sort of known for being a doctrinaire conservative. I think the only thing him and Trump had in common was they really triggered the libs and didn't like the GOP establishment. That's so right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Ted Cruz still triggers yeah. me, by the way. Um, <laughs> Richard, um, one, a, another question for you. So what about what is the relationship between cultural attitudes and class status? Because, I mean, you look a lot in particular at, like, white racial anxiety. Is there a relationship between that sense of, like, oh, my God, the country's changing and we got to lock the borders down and all of this stuff, this sort of white racial anxiety and economic or class status? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it depends on sort of how you define um class. So like I said, the um, economic sort of situation, it, it's a weak predictor of that. Uh, going to college and, you know, particularly gender, the differences between men and women, um, you know, factors like how religious people are, how whether they're married, these have a big factor. And, you know, class is sort of this amorphous concept. Um, so, I mean, it's it's all it's all there. I think the I think the role of sort of colleges and universities in sort of shaping you know, one group of people and making them different from another group of people, I think is sort of an underexplored topic. Uh, mm. While this economic stuff is is important for, you know, people's lives, it's not like we shouldn't care about economics or think about it. I, you know, just tend to think it's overrated for electoral politics. Yeah. And then yeah, final question right. for you, Richard. 
Um, so in the past in the U.S., there has been more sort of, I guess, class-based voting and more uh, class cohesion that way. And you can look at other countries and see more correlation between class and how people vote. Why do you think that that has fallen apart here? Why do you think that that relationship is so amorphous and um, in effect, I mean, just not realized in terms of like, you know, the multiracial working class coalition that people like myself on the left, that people like Sagar on the right would like to see coming together? Yeah, I think the uh, you know I think the ethnic diversity does add a um, does add a difficulty there. I mean, I think that you see it just not in the United States, but in countries in Europe and around the world when they have large scale immigration. Um, Parties tend to pop up that are opposed to immigration, and are and it tends to correlate with opposition to a lot of cultural, uh, sort of what we call cultural liberalism. So it, it's difficult in the in the American sense to sort of build that working class coalition. I mean, I think a lot of people would like to do it, and a lot of people have wanted to do it for generations. It's just really difficult, and I wouldn't, you know, put the blame on once a lot of people talk about this and they say, well, it's you know the capitalists are making, um, right. you know, are, are sort of dividing people. I, you know, I wouldn't look at it like that. I just think that people have sort of different cultural and racial attitudes and you know let me just throw one one sorry sorry what about the decline of unions within that because that seems to be you know unions are one of the few places where you have that sort of like explicit class cohesion across races yeah, I'm, I mean, it's it's a plausible hypothesis. I mean, I would, if I was going to, I mean, I haven't looked at um, unionization. I would look at other countries and see whether if unionization was sort of a uh, a factor for, uh, you know, integration and less racialized politics. I, I, you know, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I, historically, sometimes unions have been somewhat exclusionary. So I don't know if they're always um, have this sort of inclusive effect, but it, sure. it's plausible. I, yeah. I don't know. Well, Fast Richard, stuff, Richard. there's a lot of bubbles here, but people need to hear the truth. So thank you, man. <laughs> really appreciate Always it. Always trying to push our own assumptions here, Richard. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really of appreciate course. it. Mm -hmm. Coming up, follow up on our Blackstone story from earlier this week when Rising continues.